can't believe this channel has been around for two years now and I've never done an animated movie review before. But I guess it makes sense I'd start with this one, right? I mean, my first video was at Ed and Eddie, my first top 10 list was at Ed and Eddie, my first character analysis was at Ed and Eddie, so I guess it only makes sense that my first animated movie review would be at Ed and Eddie. And this movie is arguably the best series finale I've ever seen of a show. Hell, even people who don't like the show admit it was a great send-off. It ended the series the way, honestly, a show like Ed, Ed, and Eddie should have been ended. It stuck close to the formula that made it so lovable to its fans, but it also added in some great character development and serious moments. It went out of its way to end the series with the bang, and I'm so excited to finally talk about it. The movie opens up with a very different feel from a normal Ed, Ed, and Eddie episode. It opens very calmly, showing some great shots of the cul-de-sac, before sharply cutting to shots of what's clearly a big scam by the Eds gone very wrong. And honestly, despite these visuals, I still wasn't expecting what was to come next, because what comes next is Ed frantically trying to gather his belongings as if he's trying to leave town. And this is a pretty intense thing to see because Ed doesn't normally act this way. He's usually so blissfully unaware of what's going on that seeing him in such a frantic state is enough to hint that the Eds must have done something massively bad. Don't get me wrong, he's still doing Ed-like things, but the look of sheer horror on his face is actually kind of disturbing. It then cuts to Double D confirming what you already suspect in a note he's writing for his parents, that he and the other Eds were involved in something, well, literally unspeakable. Double D is so incapable of finding the right words to express what happened that all he can do is say, YOU WHAT HAVE WE DONE?! And then it cuts to Eddie trying to pack up his belongings as well when the other Eds come by. And shortly after that, the neighborhood kids come by and chase the Eds into Eddie's brother's room. And the movie's pacing slows down a bit, which adds to the suspense the movie is going for. Then the cul-de-sac kids break down the door, which reignites the suspense, and leads to a pretty kick-ass break in the fourth wall joke. In case of movie break glass... Bingo! A peanut? Big movie. Well, that peanut actually contains a key to Eddie's brother's car, which I'm really curious to know how he got into his room. I guess he Drake and Joshed it. Anyway, the neighborhood kids start breaking the door apart, and we're given our first view to what the Eds did to them, and... Jesus Christ, what the hell kind of a scam were the Eds doing? Well, guess what? We never find out. Which is very interesting because this is probably the only scam in all of Ed, Ed, and Eddie where you never know what it did or why it had such catastrophic consequences on the neighborhood kids. Yo, who do you think they did this time, Jimmy? Well, the stupid thing! If you had paid attention to what I said and not pushed the red button! So I guess it's like a suitcase from Pulp Fiction thing. It's not supposed to be explained, it's supposed to let the viewer visualize what it could have been. That'd actually be kind of interesting to discuss, so I highly recommend leaving in the comments what you think the scam was. I guarantee people could get pretty creative with what's given in the movie. The Eds end up using the car as a giant shield while Ed Fred Flintstones it with the neighborhood kids hot on their trail. And this chase scene, let me tell you, from the opening scene to the scene where the Eds get away, the amount of amazing visual humor combined with the intensity and fast-paced animation of it, it's absolutely fantastic. I could talk about this scene alone for an entire video and break down why it's so incredible. In fact, one complaint I was going to give it was that I wish it went on a little longer before I realized that scene from the intro to the end of it took up almost one tenth of the movie's runtime. It really is the best intro to any Cartoon Network movie I've ever seen. Dorks ain't seen the land. The Eds end up escaping into the desert where Ed runs the car into a rock and destroys it. The heroes find their ship destroyed. They're marooned on the robot planet. 
and knowing that the neighborhood kids aren't gonna stop looking for them, Eddie tells them they can hide out at his brother's place since it's the only place where the kids won't be able to get them. And then the movie shows all the neighborhood kids getting prepared to track the Eds down. Kevin and Naz figure out that the Eds are heading to Eddie's brother's place, and Kevin says they have to find them before they reach it, or else Eddie's brother will murder them, while Wolf tracks down the Ed's wrecked car in the desert. For the record, the majority of Rolf's scenes really show off what a strange and interesting character Rolf is. One scene in particular I really enjoy with him is when he starts making some bizarre food item on the Ed's broken down car. Because... Still to this day, I can't tell if this was some back in the old country way of tracking the Eds down, or if Rolf was just making breakfast. And that's what I like about Rolf. His methods are so unique that it allows you to use your imagination to figure out what the hell he's doing. I also like how it shows that Rolf is overworking Wilfred and taking him for granted, which leads to Wilfred eventually snapping and attacking him before running away. Because I think that scene with Wilfred snapping foreshadows arguably the most mature scene in the entire movie, but I'll get to that scene later. The Eds end up in a cow marsh where Eddie reveals that he has no idea where his brother even lives, and it's up to Double D to figure it out. So Double D starts discussing all of these previous objects Eddie has gotten from his brother in a clever little nod to some earlier episodes. His shudder some stink bomb recipes, his heinous hot sauces, oh, and my favorite malicious misleading treasure maps, together with other contentious callous cons, lead me to suspect your brother's quite the jokester. And Ed deduces that these joke items that his brother has gotten must have come from a joke shop featured in Ed's comic. That's quite a coincidence. And while that's going on, Jimmy and Sarah, who want to see the Eds get beat up by the neighborhood kids, take a shortcut through the trailer park. I'm not allowed to go in there, Sarah. I still have bad dreams, and my mom had to buy a mattress cover. <laughs> well, you had no problems going in there once before, you little shits. But in a clever little move, Jimmy and Sarah end up getting separated, and Jimmy comes across the Kanker sisters, who, of course, start harassing him, until Sarah comes to his aid. Oh, you know what I just realized? We've never seen Sarah and the Kanker sisters square off before. That has to be an epic matchup. It's the four toughest characters facing off once and for all. Oh, no, Sarah gets her ass handed to her. Well, that was almost as disappointing a fight as... Eh, too easy. Well, to help Sarah, Jimmy reveals that the Eds are being hunted by the neighborhood kids, which actually ends up in the Kankers starting their own hunt for the neighborhood kids, using Sarah and Jimmy as their servants to help find them. But in another clever little sidestep, Sarah does end up outsmarting the Kankers by sucking up to them in order to help her and Jimmy escape. And that seems to be how Sarah spends the majority of the movie, using her brain instead of her brawn to outsmart the Kankers. That's an interesting little switch in my opinion. It's those two runs. <laughs> The Eds end up in a dandelion field where Ed and Eddie start horsing around, while Double D tries to navigate through the field using this device that, well, sets up a pretty humorous adult joke. Again, sorry, I missed it. What's it called? It's commonly known as a sextant, Eddie. <laughs> Yeah, you know when Double D starts to blush like that, you picked a pretty funny name for your device. But this sexton does lead them to the joke shop, which the Eds discover is out of business, and that the magazine that led them there was from a decade prior. Double D decides to do some digging around the joke shop to see if he can find any record of Eddie's brother, while Ed and Eddie start goofing around with the prank items left over in the store. Which leads to another ingeniously funny scene that references a few Ed, Ed, and Eddie episodes. Gum? What do you mean? And when Double D is finished searching, the Eds offer him a can of jelly beans. And I want to say this. This scene here is an excellent example of how great the writing for the show was. Now at first glance, these scenes with the Eds goofing around seem like filler, right down to the prank that's basically the definition of predictable. 
the snakes in the jelly bean can joke. But this is what ends up happening. Ah, success. Now in this case, this predictable joke gets blown so far out of proportion that in a way it actually does become unexpected. And on top of that, it furthers the plot because it gives away the Ed's position to Kevin and Naz. That's an excellent way to make something that's so generically predictable, not only unpredictable, but also serviceable to the movie. The prank ends up launching Double D into a forest where he's being held over a waterfall by his hat. And Ed launches Eddie up to save him. And after Eddie does manage to save Double D, he once again credits his brother for teaching him the trick he used to save him. My big bro showed me! Do tell! <laughs> yep, my bro's a whiz at harpooning whales! Yeah, remember this scene here, because I will be talking about it as we reach the end of this movie. But because Eddie claims his brother is a whaler, Double D thinks Eddie's brother must work out in the sea. So Double D puts a boat together, and Ed ends up inadvertently getting a hold of Double D's hat and yanks it off. My eyes! They're burning! Will you stop that? Does it hurt, Double D? Oh, shut! You know, this scene here might be the most controversial scene in the movie to some Ed and Eddie fans. Because... See, Danny and Tanucci said in an interview that this movie would reveal what Double D is hiding under his hat. And this scene here is the only time Double D loses his hat in the whole movie. But it doesn't reveal what's under his hat. I think it's another suitcase from Pulp Fiction thing where it's left up to your imagination. And honestly, some pretty good theories have come from this. In fact, there's a whole page on Ed, Ed and Eddie Wiki that theorizes what Double D could be hiding. And some of them are pretty damn interesting. I'll leave a link to that for anyone who wants to check it out. Now, if I had to take a guess of what it is that Double D is hiding, I'd probably guess Double D is covering up some kind of bald spot he gave himself when he was a kid. Because Antonucci said he drew Double D with the hat, because he himself wore a hat after he burned his hair off so his parents wouldn't notice until his hair grew back. And since Double D has worn this hat since he was a kid, he probably had an accident with one of his experiments and permanently damaged his hair. That would explain why Ed and Eddie, while still mind blown by it, don't seem too disturbed by it. And even though Eddie overreacts to it, it's clear he's doing that just to mess with Double D. And it would also explain why Double D is so insecure about it, because... Well, no kid wants to show off a bad haircut, let alone a possible permanent bald spot. But that would be my guess anyway. Like I said, there's so many different possibilities to what it could be. You know what? Screw the scam theory. I want to hear what you guys think Double D is hiding under that hat. Well, the Eds end up crashing into a swamp, and Ed and Eddie decide to trick Double D into thinking they're sinking in quicksand, which causes Double D to break down. But when they reveal it's just a joke and start making fun of Double D, he walks away from them proclaiming he and Eddie no longer friends. I'd rather face my consequences, Ed, than wander aimlessly with a so-called friend! And this is the scene I feel Rolf and Wilfred's scene foreshadowed. The character getting abused by someone they were loyal to for so long, finally snapping and deciding they don't want to be around that person anymore. But it's of course a lot different and a lot more powerful here. Because once Double D proclaims him and Eddie are no longer friends, Eddie actually breaks down and owns up to everything that went wrong. Yeah, you heard me! A foul up ought to be loser! <laughs> Your shirt, Eddie. My shirt? Are those salt deposits from your lamentation? <laughs> gotcha! And that's probably the realest moment in this show's history. Don't get me wrong, they've talked about real issues that kids go through before, but it's always in a very cartoony way and sticks to comedy 100% of the time. This is the first time they ever got emotional, and after years and years of this show being mostly comedy, you would think it would seem out of place or forced, but no, it feels very natural. It's the first real grown-up moments that Eddie has ever had, and it's actually a very welcome thing to see. Hell, even Double D forgiving him, while happening pretty quickly, isn't out of place because Eddie very seldom, if ever at all, takes responsibility for everything that happened to the Eds instead of passing blame. So, 
It is believable that Eddie is being sincere and really does feel bad about everything. This is just an overall excellent example of introducing something real and mature to a show that never focuses on that and making it feel really genuine. It's just a phenomenal scene. You hurt my palate! What would you do without me, Eddie? Don't milk it, Sockhead! The movie then cuts to Naz and Kevin getting out of the joke shop and Kevin running Naz over with his bike before trying to clean off his bike because it got dirty. And... Uh, I'll be honest, Kevin and Naz's scenes were the scenes I found the weakest in the whole movie. Don't get me wrong, they're not horrendous or anything, but everyone else's scenes are much more entertaining. Or, in Johnny's case, they don't really focus on him that much. They get what they can out of him and move on. Kevin and Naz's scenes, however, feel a lot more forced and are borderline distracting to me. Literally, every single one of these scenes involves Naz getting beat up and Kevin caring more about his bike than her. Left her out in the cold. Bad for the paint, you know? It also shows that apparently Naz is more into Kevin than he is to her, which honestly was a vibe I never got from this show, and sometimes it just comes off as awkward. And after seeing a genuine scene with the Eds, by the time this scene came around, that running gag with Naz getting beat up and Kevin caring more about his bike, it was just distracting. But in all fairness, in an hour and a half long movie, you're bound to come across some scenes you'd gladly fast forward through. And these are those scenes for me. I just don't get her, man. Well, the Kankers track down the neighborhood kids one by one and kidnap them to protect the Eds. While the Eds end up in an amusement park called Mondo a Go-Go Land, which Double D realizes is where Eddie's brother sent the postcard from. And they figure out that Eddie's brother lives in a trailer in that amusement park but the Kankers end up getting there at the same time as the Eds. How they figured out the Eds were there, I honestly have no idea. And they reveal they stopped the other neighborhood kids from getting to the Eds. But when Kevin starts breaking free, Eddie reveals that his brother lives in that trailer. And we finally get to see the long-awaited reveal of Eddie's big brother. Is that those ankle biters from the cul-de-sac? Yeah, and they want to beat me up. All for nothing. He's looking at you, Rolf. Later. All for nothing, huh? Well, honestly, I don't know what else I was expecting. He literally looks like an older version of Eddie. But in a truly unexpected twist, it turns out that Eddie's brother is extremely abusive towards Eddie. And he treats Eddie so abhorredly that even the neighborhood kids start to take pity on him. Dude, Eddie's brother is a real jerk. Double D finally has enough of it and stands up for Eddie, resulting in Eddie's brother turning his hostility towards Double D. And this, in turn, results in everyone standing up for the Eds. Hey, bro guy, play off him, man! Yeah, Mr. Macho Man! It even results in a really badass scene with Ed doing something smart and unhinging the door Eddie's holding on to and Eddie ends up slamming the door against his brother who gets knocked out. And finally, Eddie reveals that everything he said about his brother, every cool thing his brother did, every story Eddie had about his brother, it was all a lie so everyone would think Eddie was cool. I just made things up so people would like me, think I was cool. But boy was I wrong, scam my brother, this. What am I gonna learn, Double D? And this is why that scene with Eddie crediting his brother for him being able to save Double D seems very deep to me. It seems to be implying that even the things Eddie does right, the things Eddie does that actually would make him seem cool, he still gives that credit to his brother who's really nothing more than just a big bully. And I think Eddie's brother tormenting him is the exact reason Eddie wanted to build his brother up to such a high standard. His brother broke him down so much that Eddie was left in a state where he didn't feel like anyone would find him cool no matter what he did. So he felt like everything he did that seemed cool would be even stronger if he credited his brother for teaching it to him. And on top of that, Eddie being a scammer and a deceiver to the neighborhood kids seems like a bad habit he picked up from his brother because he chose to idolize someone who was nothing but a bad influence. 
And in a way, I think Eddie created the older brother he always wanted, just because he was incapable of dealing with his own insecurities that were brought on to him by the brother he actually had. This whole moment where Eddie reveals that everything he's ever said about his brother wasn't true, tells me so much about Eddie's character and the reasons Eddie was the way he was, that I can't help but appreciate him even more. And in the end, Eddie owning up to his mistakes and the neighborhood kids seeing what Eddie's gone through, results in all the neighborhood kids forgiving the Eds and accepting them as part of their crew. Hell, Johnny even shows up at the end. Strange that he took the bus and yet still ended up being the last person to show up. And he beats up the Eds because he still thinks they're wanted for their earlier actions. But this results in Johnny getting beaten up by the other neighborhood kids who call the Eds their friends and they whisk the Eds away in triumph while Double D delivers another phenomenal break in the fourth wall joke. We did it, Double D! Everyone loves us! We're finally in, baby! And it only took 130 episodes for specials and a movie, Eddie. And they all sing a song about friendship as the movie ends, giving this show the perfect ending it deserved since the show first started. When you stub your toe and it hurts, you know, friends are there to help you. And that was the Ed, Ed, and Eddie Big Picture Show, and it is fantastic. You can tell the staff really wanted to go above and beyond for this show's finale, and boy did they succeed. Every single second spent on the Eds felt perfect. Every new thing in this town they live in felt like an adventure to me. I just couldn't help but feel like I was becoming a part of this quest with them, and that's what any good movie should do. It should suck you in and make you feel a part of the story with the characters. And the movie also managed to not only keep that Ed, Ed, and Eddie charm that made so many of us love the show, but give us moments that we never would have expected that show the true humanity that has always been behind this show. It's arguably the best thing this show has ever created, and it was the best way to send this show off. And that'll do it for my first animated movie review, and it was certainly a fun experience to talk about this movie. I really feel like I picked a great movie to give my first movie review to, and it was every bit as fun as I expected it to be. But does this mean I'm done talking about Ed, Ed, and Eddie? Well, maybe for the time being, but considering that there are still holiday episodes to talk about and seasonal reviews I could do, I wouldn't say Ed, Ed, and Eddie will never appear on this channel again. But I would say I've, at this point, covered the majority of what made Ed, Ed, and Eddie work and what made it fail. Hell, it's not just me who can do this show justice. The Alpha J Show has also made a video on this movie, and he did a great job. Hell, he did an even better job than me. Going over all the things that not only made this movie good, but that made the show good. And there are even people like Monster of Bloodbath Lagoon who understood this show so well, they were able to make an entire real-life movie that captures the Ed, Ed, and Eddie charm, and also feels like how the Eds would be once they became teenagers. And for me personally, it feels like the more I discuss this show, the more happier I am to have grown up with it. It's a show that was nothing short of genuinely amazing. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you in the next review.